one of the interesting things about these uh, Florida strain largemouth, a dog can, can smell a hundred times better than a man, and a fish can smell a hundred times better than a dog. Their olfactory is so well developed, that's why a lot of times it's uh, to your advantage to use scents. I've told my little pepper hog jig to move his way around, Pappy's pepper, and, and I'm just going to work my way around and find the fish I want. It's nice when you have an obedient bait. Yeah, it? this bait does exactly what I tell yeah, it. Yeah, I'm going to juice this swim bait up here real quick. This is a Bang aerosol in shad, and I'm just going to douse it really good. And the way we've been successful with this is just by slow rolling it. Let me show you what this looks like in the water. Greg, do you let it sink to the bottom and then slow I roll do. it? I do. I let it go all the way to the bottom and pray to God it doesn't go into a bush. You know, at 20 bucks a bait. <laughs> 20, <man>. bucks. <laughs> 20 bucks a pop, that gets... Uh... Yeah. Bass aren't intimidated by big baits, man. They yeah. love them. They absolutely... As a matter of fact, you know, bass are lazy. And if they don't have to move but three or four feet to get a large bait to fill their belly, they're going to do it rather than picking up seven or eight crawdads they got to work for, you know. So, yeah, don't hesitate to throw a big bait. Oh, man, I just got nailed. Is that on that swim bait, Greg? Yeah, oh, man, he hit it hard. He didn't get the hook, but, man, he slammed it. Your catch rate, 25, 30 fish in, in, a, in a morning, in a four-hour outing, not uncommon at all. Um, what we're utilizing today is uh, a real slow, methodical approach because these fish are cold-blooded. They, uh, they need the presentation real slow because they're not moving real fast. They're in deep water right now. We're fishing between 30, 35 feet of water, and uh, we're moving everything so slow because they're just not going to take anything moving very quick. They want to take a good look at it. They're, they're down there in the warmest water the lake has to offer, and uh, when, you, when you present that bait slowly and for a long period of time is when you seem to get your, your greatest increase in bites. The fish we're catching out here this winter have ranged from two and a half pounds to uh, 713 is the biggest that, that, that's come off so far, but there's bigger in here. And uh, again, where else can you go in the middle of February and uh, in, enjoy the temperatures that we do along with the, the fabulous fishery that we have access to out here. It's well managed. This is a prolific fish. It's a Florida strain largemouth. <clears throat> this lake is very well managed. The forage base of this lake is uh, crawdads, crayfish, and uh, bluegill. And uh, you know, both of those uh, forage bases are very pro prolific also. So when you, when you put a fish in here that can grow up to two pounds a year when the conditions are right, and you've got forage base that is so easily reproduced, you have for a tremendous fishery. So the fishing game, my hat's off to, to the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources. They've managed this lake very well. Oh, nice one. Not bad. Yeah, probably two to three pound fish. I love it. Greg's got us right over here in one of his honey holes. Catching fish. Absolutely beautiful. Good job, man. On that uh, bluegill crankbait. Nice and slow. Just slow rolling it. And And it was aggressive, he crushed it. It wasn't yeah. a slow stop, it was just. Before you head out on your next adventure, make sure you bring your vehicle into a Firestone Complete Auto Care Center. Have them check it over from top to bottom so you're not that guy on the side of the road. And while you're here, make sure they put a fresh set of interstate batteries in.